Hi, I'm Eric Lerner. I'm Chief Scientist at LPP Fusion. Welcome to the fourth episode of The Real Crisis in Cosmology. In the last episode, we saw that the large-scale structures in the universe took too long to form for the time since the Big Bang. But the problem gets worse, because without dark matter, the Big Bang predicts that no structures would have time to form in the mere 14 billion years since the hypothesized Big Bang. Since dark matter is hypothesized to be five times as dense, as massive, as ordinary matter, it accelerates gravitational contraction and allows structure to form in those 14 billion years. As we'll see in later episodes, there are other strong reasons why the Big Bang Theory requires dark matter to exist. No dark matter, no Big Bang. But does dark matter exist? Well, what is dark matter? Dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter that is invisible and different from the ordinary matter that we have on Earth in the solar system or that we see anywhere in the universe. It's essentially invisible matter. Its technical term is called non-baryonic matter, not made out of baryons. Baryons are protons and neutrons which form the nuclei of all ordinary matter. So, dark matter is very different, it's invisible, and we don't know quite what it is. It sounds a lot like fairy dust. Well, it's a pretty dark and murky subject, but in the course of the few minutes, of the next few minutes, I think we're going to shine some light on it and convince you that it's not so dark because dark matter doesn't exist. Now, the first reason for doubting the existence of dark matter is that we've never observed any. Well, I mean, how are you going to observe invisible matter? Well, The Big Bang hypothesis predicts that dark matter consists of what they call weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs. It seems it's impossible to do cosmology without inventing cutesy acronyms. So these WIMPs are weakly interacting. They're not non-interacting. So very rarely, every so often, you should be able to observe the interaction of a dark matter particle with an ordinary matter particle. So way back in the 1970s, Big Bang theorists predicted that with a big enough accelerator or a sensitive enough instrument, we should be able to observe the interaction dark matter wimps with ordinary matter. Well, to make a long story short, in the 50 years since this prediction was made, no dark matter particles have been observed. Even in huge accelerators like the LHC, or big and very sensitive instruments like Xenon-1T, In all these years, decades, with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars spent, no wimps have been observed. So that's the first piece of evidence that dark matter doesn't exist. Now, of course, you can say, well, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So 
Maybe the dark matter wimps will show up one sweet day. But there are at least two big observational pieces of evidence that do prove that dark matter doesn't exist. The first involves a process called dynamic viscosity. Now, dynamic viscosity occurs when a object of real matter, ordinary matter, in this diagram, the red dot, let's say it's a galaxy, is moving through a background of dark matter. That's the black dots. Since dark matter and ordinary matter are hypothesized to interact gravitationally, as the red dot moves, the black dots are attracted to it. So they congregate in a temporary concentration behind the moving red dot. Well, since they are considered to be massive, they continuously attract the red dot and pull it backwards, slowing it down. So in this hypothesis, the energy of the red dot of the galaxy has to be continuously transferred to the dark matter. So the red dot, the galaxy, acts as if it's in a viscous medium. So this is dynamic viscosity. And if dark matter exists, this must happen. Well, does it really happen? The answer is no. Wolfgang Ohm and Pavel Krupa, among other researchers, took a look at dynamic viscosity in groups of galaxies. So groups of galaxies are small collections of galaxies that are very close together, just like in these images. So they said, what would happen to these groups of galaxies with dynamic viscosity? And what they did was very careful calculations, again, published in peer-reviewed journals, that show that dynamic viscosity would rapidly slow these galaxies down, and thus they'd be pulled together and merge into each other, forming a single galaxy. So these groups of galaxies would only exist for a very short period of time. That means we could see them only for that short period of time, and therefore they would be very rare in the universe. But they're not. They're actually very common in the universe. A hundred times more common than would be predicted if dark matter's dynamic viscosity existed. Well, this is a lot more serious. Because the predictions of the dark matter model are completely contradicted by observations, this rules out the dark matter hypothesis. If dark matter exists, there should be no groups of galaxies. But since groups of galaxies are common, there is no dark matter. Now, a third reason dark matter does not exist has to do with the satellites of galaxies. Big galaxies, like our own Milky Way, have smaller galaxies moving around them as satellites, just like planets like Earth have moons moving around them as satellites. Well, the dark matter hypothesis says that each galaxy is embedded in a huge spherical halo of dark matter. Now, it's spherical because dark matter, unlike what we can call ordinary or real matter, does not interact with itself. It doesn't collide with itself. So the dark matter particles just move in random orbits, creating a symmetrical, spherical halo. Real particles collide with each other, 
and these collisions redistribute the energy so that gradually everything collapses into a disk. Now, the satellites of galaxies, according to the dark matter theory, are moving under the gravitational influence of this huge spherical halo. So they, too, should be distributed spherically, just randomly moving around the parent galaxy. But, again, if we look at the data, that's just not true. If we look at the two big galaxies that are closest to us, our own Milky Way, and the neighboring Andromeda galaxy, also called M31, we find that all of the satellite galaxies are in a disk formation. If you look at this diagram for Andromeda, you see that all of the satellites mapped are in two disks, the two lines on this diagram. They are not even close to being randomly distributed to being in a spherical uh, distribution. Now, all of these papers have been published in big peer-reviewed journals like the Astrophysical Journal. And we don't mean to say that these are the only reasons that dark matter doesn't exist. Professor Krupa and others have produced long lists, which they've published in big journals, of the many reasons why dark matter contradicts observations of galaxies in the universe. But what I've presented here should convince you that dark matter doesn't exist. Now, many of you out there will probably be asking, well, what about the large velocities that have been observed in the spin of galaxies? What about the large velocities of galaxies themselves moving around large clusters of galaxies? This has been put forward as evidence for dark matter. Well, in the next episode, we'll show how these phenomena, and indeed all phenomena dealing with the large-scale structure of the universe, can be explained without dark matter, indeed, without a Big Bang. All of them can ex be explained by a combination of gravitation, magnetic fields, and the electric currents that produce the magnetic fields, all driven by the energy of fusion reactions in stars. So, I hope you'll watch the next episode where we'll discuss how cosmic evolution happened with no Big Bang, no dark energy, no dark matter, nothing dark at all. The references for this episode are in the description. And don't forget to watch our new video, Pandemic, Economic Crises, and the Energy Density Solution. Like, share, and thanks for watching.